We're on the beautiful Aran Island. It's not known for its hurling culture, but didn't stop Johnny Cohen coming out for the spin on the ferry. Hot on the trot of two Leinster championships in a row. Yes, yeah, good, good feeling, all right. And um, you know, to be back, I was out here a few years ago now as well. And on you know, a day like today, in particular, it's it's absolutely lovely, you know. And we're above and uh, doing Angus there as well, taking a few pictures and doing a bit of promos and that sort of stuff now, such so as nice, you know. Maybe a little bit relaxed now, you guys. You know you're safely through to the next round and you'll be watching the rest battle it out. Well, this is it, yeah. We're fortunate enough now we got a good result here on Sunday and in three weeks' time now we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take to the field again. So we'll leave the matter there now for this weekend uh, when they're doing the quarterfinals. What changed? Obviously, people are looking at the two games. They were so different. What changed in the week? We were Myself and Tommy Welch were actually talking about this afterwards and uh, we were saying, chances are Brian Cody would have been happy going home after the first Leinster final. Michael Donahue you might have brought out the hair dryer. How did it go? Yeah, I think a few of us might have brought out the hair dryer, as you say. But um, you know, going home on the bus individually, we weren't overly happy with how we played, and collectively, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of passage of play. There was only one or two good points really that we were happy with. Um, you know, we really wanted to set the agenda straight. You know, we took a lot of learnings from the week previously, and you know, brought, brought a new dimension to our game there on Sunday. Did the hype get to you? I don't think so. Like the hype kind of comes from within. Um, you know, we had won the Leinster final last year. We'd won the All Ireland last year. We've won the Leinster this year, and you know we're going to keep driving on for the All Ireland again this year. We've, we'll be doing our own little bit of homework, and we'll be looking at our own performance as well and seeing come semi final time. You know, there really there isn't, there isn't a whole lot of room for error. You look at the last three years against Tipperary when we played them. There's only been one point between the teams on every single game. Like so, if you're not at your best, you're going to be found wanting. Now, the thing that has been thrown to Galway was, yes, you finally won your All-Ireland last year, but you didn't beat Kilkenny on the way, therefore it made it maybe a little less valuable. Now, plenty would dispute that, obviously, but you've managed to beat Kilkenny twice now this year. I assume you might like a crack at them in an All-Ireland final as well? I don't know. Like, Kilkenny really have been the mantra for the last 20 years, and like the work that Brian Cody has done has been absolutely exemplary, and I don't think anyone can, can you know, you know give out about the, what they've achieved or anything like that you know we were, we were delighted with what we what we came up with uh, last year you know they didn't progress to the Leinster final we didn't get a crack at them or anything like that but so be it there's, there's enough teams out there you know with huge amount of determination huge amount of hurling ability and you know we're always kind of looking at our own performance and whoever you're playing if you're not at your very very best you're not going to win the game and that's it. You've been in the Leinster Championship and it's been a kind of a different kettle of fish to Munster and the high profile casualties haven't been there yet. From looking at afar, what do you think of the changes in the championship structure so far as regards to hurling? I think it has been hugely positive for sure. Yeah, there was a time there like we, you play in a, a Leinster quarter final and a Leinster semi final and maybe a final, but you know, this time you were guaranteed four hugely competitive games. Um, as you said there, there was good, huge casualties there in Munster. They were really having a right good battle over there and any of the teams could have really progressed right up until the last day. And I think, I think it has been hugely successful, really. Finally, you're out here in the Iron Islands, you're on the edge of Ireland. And yet, from what I heard from people who were here, that a lot of the children especially wanted to see you. Now, obviously, they're still Gaul regions, but hurling never really, really took off in Connemara. Whereas I saw last year between as well, I think it was Gareth McInerney, who was at a petrol station mm. in Kosla, and there was traffic jams. And every child in Connemara has a jersey signed now by Gareth McInerney. Uh, maybe do you see the day that perhaps hurling might spread, spread a little bit more west to Galway? Absolutely, like there's been huge, huge strides. Even I suppose in towards the city there as well. You're looking at Castlegar and Lee Mellows won the won the trophy, or the county cup there last weekend. Like, and you go a little bit more, you have Barna and you have Furbo, and you know they've they've really been doing great work as well. And there's no reason why it can't be progressing. Like we were out there in the pitch there, and there's a huge amount of joy there when you're bringing the, the Lee McCarthy and the Sam McGuire cups out there, and they're just delighted really to get a, to get a flavour of. of of what what's going on really like um, up at Crow Park level then as well and you know it's just great to be here as well the sun is shining and uh, we're we're among good people.